As we know, carbon fiber is a strong and lightweight material. It has several advantages over other materials, such as strength to weight ratio, and of course, stiffness. While it's fantastic for constructing things like frames and forks, it's not so good for making parts that need to resist abrasion. In today's video, we are gonna look at components that Rob thinks should never have been made from carbon. Who's Rob? My name's Rob Granville. I am an industrial designer, owner of Carbon Bike Repair. I've been doing this for about 12 years, done tens of thousands of bikes. And hopefully today I can help you dispel some of the questions asked and the misunderstandings of the carbon fiber here today. I don't know what they were thinking, making chain rings out of carbon fiber. I'm sure experimenting with carbon is fine and you try and get the bike as light as you can, but chain rings are just a, it's a no, it's a no-win situation because carbon fiber doesn't abrade well. It just it turns to powder because it's so hard. The tips of the carbon ones get they, they're the first to go, aren't they? Mainly if you're running derailleurs, but even on modern 11, 12 speed group sets where the chain has to come across up and over the teeth, mm. they it splits the laminate. You end up with chip chip teeth. Alloy ones, you can see that they're bent. Carbon ones, they just break off so how many miles can you get on a chain ring that's a carbon fiber roughly i would save them for a race day clean new maintained chain i'd say 70 to 100 miles you know it's, <laughs> it's, not, a, it's not, not a lot one ride yeah it's one ride one, the one, one race and they're quite expensive aren't they yeah if you're going to use it as like a daily item a training on your training bike or something forget about it a chain ring that lasts 100 miles that's not for me the thing is that plastics, this is most likely polypropylene. Polypropylene is what you get your shampoo bottle hinges and caps on. They can, you can open them and close them all day long and they don't break. Same with bottle cages like this. These are very flexible and they look quite, this looks like, I've seen many carbon ones that look similar to this. Problem with carbon is you can flex it to a certain point, but then it will, it will snap, it will give way. The chances of you breaking a bottle cage uh, that's made of carbon is very likely. And they're not cheap compared to these. Going back to the chain ring, similar thing with the abrasion. Mm. You know, you're adding dirt, sweat, energy gel, all the sorts of stuff you get on a ride. And You'll nice. get the abrasion on the sides of the cage. Obviously it starts mm. to affect the structure of it. From a mechanics point of view, I'm forever seeing them where they're bolted into the bikes, uh, where the bolts have been over tightened and you just end up with the deformation in case of carbon, it normally cracks and then you've got a useless bottle cage and your bottle goes flying down the road or bounces off your mate's wheel and it's, uh, off to A&E, so yeah. Back when I was racing, I had loads of carbon bottle cages. The reason I had so many is because they kept breaking. Why did you keep buying them? I'm sure you've all seen lightweights. The guy who invented the, the lightweight wheel had some rather novel ideas, and one of them was carbon spokes. He had a great, a clever way of chewing carbon spokes. Remember what I said, carbon doesn't stretch. So it's a really good starting point when you're trying to true a wheel in manufacture you bond the ends in the process and then the hubs when they're set flat on each other are going to be nice and loose and all they did was pull them out and then bond them in their position and you end up with a wheel even though this wheel has been through hell is a, is so true it's brilliant it's a very clever system oh and of course it's very light the downside of carbon spokes once they break they're broken you can't repair them you can't replace them Yes, you get carbon spokes that have nipples on them and so on and so forth. But the issue I have with that is that the, the carbon spoke itself, when they do impact into something, will generally shatter and break. And you end up with what looks like a porcupine quill. If we were talking about disc breaks, they were talking about the disc itself being potentially quite dangerous in a crash scenario. I would suggest that carbon spokes would be <laughs> quite a lot more dangerous if you consider that they would shatter because they're so dry and they don't deal with the impact as, as, as well. Potentially lethal things. There's upsides and downsides to the spokes, but I don't see them being that necessary. Whereas, if you look at the alloy spoke, it will buckle before it breaks. The carbon spoke will not. I've actually got a set of carbon spoke parkours that we're supposed to be testing, but, well, I'm scared now. I hope they don't snap. Hopefully not. My feelings on breaking surfaces are fairly well known. Uh, carbon, brake rims I've never liked from the day I saw them. The idea of having a brake surface in metal is fine. It's abrasion resistant. When it gets hot, it doesn't really do anything. What's happening here is you get a delamination on the surface. It gets so hot that this layer of protective high heat uh, resin comes away and then we start eating into the surface. Have you ever rode this bike 
was lucky they stopped when they did. Now what tends to happen is if you're putting a PSI into the wheel, um, you might be anywhere from 80 to 120, 140 PSI if you really need that. But that's a lot of pressure pushing out on the rim. And if you're doing a lot of hairpins and, and, and mountain stages, and you haven't got your braking sorted, you might be putting too much pressure on the front wheel. If you've got very efficient brake pads, they are designed to stop you. They're not designed to save your wheel. So when they start heating up, which they will do, and if you potentially put, a, 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 you know, put an emergency brake on, you're going to heat one section of the wheel while the other is a little cooler. And what happens is then the pressure of the tire starts to play into the heat walls. The resin starts to melt a little bit, starts to deform outwards. And as it goes outwards, guess what? It's got nowhere to go because the next thing it's going to hit is a, a moving brake pad, which then starts to eat into the surface of the material and so the wheel delaminates and it delaminates in seconds. This thing can happen so fast. You can start to feel that chip, 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 chip sound as you go, it jerks. That's the time to stop riding. Get off the bike, cool it down, let it try and re -cure because as I said again, carbon doesn't stretch. So if the wheel rim is still hot, that carbon will want to go back to where it was before, believe it or not. It will still try and go back if it's still malleable enough. So if you can stop it while it's getting hot, stop, deflate the tire and you can save your life. We've both ridden loads of carbon braking surfaces. I've personally never actually had any issues apart from when they're wet and they don't stop. The issue I have with front brake hangers, carbon ones, it is a, an evolution of a solution that was on aluminium and metal bikes, steel bikes. What they've done is they've then blended this in and made it out of a brittle but very, very strong and stiff carbon fiber piece. Let's be honest, this will not move around at all. If you aggressively change gear or you, you hit something where the chain moves offline, it pulls on the front neck and it generally pulls it forward which twists it. Now if it was an aluminium one, it would probably bend, which would put it out of alignment, but then you could always unrivet it you could take it to your repair and unrivet it and put a replacement on, bond it back in again. But with carbon, when that snaps, it will snap because it won't flex. That's gone. And unfortunately, then you lose the entire bike. The whole bike is compromised because there's no way that you can, you can repair a part like that safely. As a carbon repairer, that to me is something that I find unnecessary. I do like that with carbon, you can make mad tube shapes. This is a, not only is an alloy dropout, yes it's heavier, but it's replaceable. So you've got the hanger and the dropout all in one. So we moved from an aluminium, pure aluminium dropout, into an aluminium inserted dropout in a more modern style where it attaches a hanger to it. The benefit of an aluminium dropout was it could abrade much slower and you can see this has had a good life in it, but it's, it's still just got skewer marks on it, but it's in really healthy condition. So this was a good idea, but yes, a little bit of weight. And then they went to this, this carbon iteration, which I really don't like. They made various versions of this dropout system. And you can already see on this, this particular bike how much rubbing, whatever step down this is, and how much this inner slot wears out, particularly on the drive side. You can ruin a carbon dropout with a loose gear in one ride. I'm glad to say that I'm seeing brands now going into the through axle system, which mitigates a bunch of those problems. And the only problem that you left with here in this particular carbon dropout is that if you have, again, rear chain suck, where the rear mech jams in the, in the jockey wheels, and if you're particularly out of the saddle and you're pushing down on a climb, you have no time to back off because you've committed to the, to the rotation. What happens is that one quarter to half rotation is enough for that rear mech to come swinging around and then what it does is it, it starts to deform the hanger and then it snaps here, uh, generally your chainstay will go and then it might jam, end up jammed in the chainstay. Put it down in the comments if there's any stuff that you think should never have been made of carbon fiber. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions for Rob, in that comment section down below as well. Please subscribe for more and see you guys soon.